So chair, it's it's three minutes after eight. Uh, I think we have all the commissioners except for one. Uh, so you do have a quorum. So we could we can move forward with the meeting. Okay. All right. Good good morning to everyone. Uh, it's always a pleasure and a privilege to meet with such an auspicious group. Um, and and the fact that you know everyone's here uh, just about. Uh, and no one's had any difficulties or problems uh, that we we know of. So as as normal, I will read the uh, governor's declaration in accordance with Governor Northam's. Sorry, let me start over. In accordance with Governor Raff Northam's declaration of a state of emergency due to the novel coronavirus, Executive Order 51 on March 12th, 2020, and the local declaration of emergency ratified by the Portsmouth City Council, and due to the coronavirus pandemic, which is continuing in the Commonwealth of Virginia, this meeting of the Portsmouth Economic Development Authority is being held by video conference on the 16th day of February, 2021, without a quorum present in the sixth floor conference room in the city hall in order to reduce the likely spread of the coronavirus. Each EDA member is participating from their home. This meeting is being held in accordance with Portsmouth City Ordinance 2020-102. Notice of public access and participation to this electronic meeting was posted on the EDA and the city's website and comments to the board about this meeting was received by EDA staff via the PORTECO at PortsmouthVA.gov email address. And again, uh, we welcome everybody, especially, uh, I think we often kind of forget sometimes that we have a lot of citizens uh, that are listening and tuning in. I, I didn't realize how many until I run into some of them and they tell me that uh, they watch. So we also want to welcome uh, any of our citizens and the staff here this morning. So as, as normal, we will uh, begin our agenda and our secretary will take over uh, beginning with the roll call. Thank you, Chair. Just want to make sure everyone can hear me okay. I'm gonna just take that as yes. Uh, roll call vote, Mr. Barber. I'm here. Ms. Drury. Here. Mr. Mitchell. Mr. Mitchell. Maybe he's working, working on his computer. Okay, I know he's here. Uh, Mr. Saunders Smith. Here. Mrs. Barbara Smith, and Chairman Smith. Here. All right, thank you, sir. We do have a quorum. Um, before we move forward, I did want to say again, um, good morning to everyone um, as far as citizens, as, as the chair stated, thank you for tuning in this morning. Uh, certainly want to also welcome uh, our vice mayor, uh, DeAndre Barnes, uh, to the meetings, our new liaison, one of our newest liaisons, I anticipate uh, Mr. Battle being here as well later this morning and as well as Ms. Phillips uh, from our finance department and Mr. Bob Baldwin I believe you all as well uh, thank you for attending the meeting this morning our first item of business chair is a notification regarding Mr. Kyle Kovacic for the members of the commission for liaisons Mr. Kovacic has resigned from the board as of February 1st so there will be a need by council to fill that position going forward mr barnes i believe is, is part of that the part of the liaisons for that group so to make him aware mr kabachik has resigned and we will need to move forward later on in the agenda with regards to his replacement on the board as far as treasurer is concerned but wanted to bring to the commission's uh, uh, attention that mr kabachik has resigned from the board effective february 1st All right, Chair, moving forward. 
you have the minutes. You should have received the minutes in your packet from the January 19th, 2021 meeting. I stand for a motion in a second and then a discussion as necessary. So moved for the adoption. Thank you, Mr. Barber. Thank you, Ms. Drury. Any discussion of the motion? All right, Mr. Barber. Aye. Ms. Drury. Aye. Mr. Mitchell. Yes. Mrs. Saunders Smith. Yes. Mrs. Barbara Smith. Thank you. I see you this morning. You're on. You're on mute. Yes. Thank you. And Chairman Smith. Thank you. You're on mute as well, sir. Yes. Thank you, sir. The motion carries. Next item up for discussion is we do have a, a brief update by Ms. Patty Phillips on the financials. Ms. Ms. Phillips this morning, uh, you will hear her. Um, unfortunately, you will not see her, but we will bring the financials on the screen. Ms. Phillips, I will turn it over to you. All right. Good morning, everyone. Uh, we are working on changing the formats a little bit, trying to make these a little bit um, more useful to the members of the um, EDA. Uh, we have uh, here the statement of net position, which is basically the balance sheet. And the um, EDA has uh, $922,850. Uh, it has some receivables due for leases. Uh, a capital asset of a million two, which is the land on which the uh, hotel and the air rights sit. And um, your other assets, 21624973 are the property that the authority holds for resale. Uh, liabilities are, are basically um, amounts borrowed for, for land, the 5217 the million736. And then the amount due to the city 280. So liability was a 7 million 234, 244. So your net position unrestricted is 15.4 million, but that's primarily your land. So just, just as a recap. All right, go to the next one, please. The um Statement of revenues, expenses, and changes in net position. Um, rental income, which is not all in cash. This is accrued at uh, the end of December. You've got some expenses of 141,366. Can I bring this down and keep going? Your local development grants, 32,000. Uh, interest expense, 27,000. Contributions of land from the Portsmouth Housing Redevelopment valued at 3,128. And that's part of that land that increased uh, this fiscal year. So uh, transfers to the city, 62,500, which basically the rental income that the authority has received. So net position has increased $3 million so far this fiscal year. Uh, go ahead to the next chart, please. Uh, this is hard to see, but I think you all have it uh, you, on your screens that you can probably see in more detail. Uh, I think we can improve upon this by enlarging the numbers a little bit, but basically this is your, um, your budget compared to the actual and what's, what's available and go ahead to the next one. Next slide, please. And this next one, I'm not gonna go into detail, but basically it is a history of your uh, land held for resale and uh, investment and expenses that the authority has incurred uh, so far associated with that land. And I'll be happy to try to answer some questions if there are any, or if anyone has suggestions on how to uh, improve. There's a lot of detail here, but some folks um, may need that detail. So I'd be happy to 
consider that. Uh, Mr. Chairman, I just had some questions, but I can, uh, I'd prefer to just talk with uh, Ms. Phillips uh, uh, offline there. Be glad to have you. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Any additional questions regarding the financials? So we will send those to audit as we typically do. Uh, and, and again, I would echo uh, the sentiments of uh, Mr. Barber. Anytime that there are questions that you all may have, please do not hesitate to reach out to staff. Certainly myself, Mr. Brian Donahue, and Ms. Phillips are here and available to sit down and have that discussion with you and, and answer any questions that you may have. That's right. These are not, we don't want to waste our time if they're not useful to you. So we want to make them useful. Thank you again, Ms. Phillips. Thank you. Mayor, if you don't mind, we'll move forward to old business. As you can see on your agenda, our Portsmouth at Work Workforce Development Initiative has launched. And, and want to have a discussion with you this morning, kind of tell you where we are and what we've done so far. And we're really excited about what this means for the city, what this means for the citizens and for our economic development strategy as a whole. But workforce development, when we talk about what we want to do, again, several years ago, we started out with Hire Portsmouth, which really was an initiative to bring people to the table to have discussions about workforce development because we, we saw that a number of different groups were doing workforce development and, and talent development. However, they weren't all working together uh, to make those things happen. They were doing them individually. So making some progress, but incrementally, because again, you're doing it separately. From there, we've morphed into what I think is really a dynamic program led by Ms. Pamela Croom and our office who is our, our workforce development guru to come up with what we are now calling, again, Portsmouth at Work. And this is really a, a talent development and retention initiative that's really set to assist unemployed and underemployed residents while building a pipeline for future workers here in Portsmouth. Next slide. Next slide. So kind of the question is kind of why now? You know, Portsmouth has some of the highest income inequality in the region and unemployment inequality when it comes to underserved uh, communities. We have a number of those here, uh, certainly a high unemployment rate as compared to the state, still relatively low, but higher than what the state is and the high, one of the highest in the region. And Portsmouth organizations are, experienced, are experiencing this kind of labor shortage, if you will, and, and we're doing what I like to call old school kind of economic development where we uh, we land a project, announce a project, create the jobs, but we've got to take it a step further and really focus on filling those jobs more specifically with Portsmouth residents. Uh, I would even take it even further and say, we need to make sure that any job that is created in the region needs to be uh, set to where our citizens are prepared for those positions going forward. Next slide. And we're doing this because we want to make sure we 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 reinforce that you know what we're doing in economic development again that whole you know creating the job not just creating a position making sure again that our folks are ready for those positions and we want to make sure that we are uh, doing our best to lower that unemployment rate um, and raise the overall income levels and we're talking person by person and job by job so we don't we, we want to come in to make sure we're bringing in high paying jobs as much as we can and making sure again that those folks are uh coming from the city of portsmouth next slide so our overarching goals really are we want to make sure we can create an environment that uh, fosters collaboration uh and, and has you know, some pathway for meaningful employment and then we want to make sure that when we look at what we're impacting we want to impact those quality of life factors. Naturally, we're going to impact unemployment, underemployment, things of that nature. But when we go to the next slide, we really want to make sure we focus on um, some quality of life metrics. And those metrics really come down to uh, making sure they're inclusive, making sure individuals are ready for hire. Again, making sure we have that collaborative ecosystem and we've got we have an integrated development process and pipeline. Again, so create the positions 
fill the positions. And we feel like this will give us a competitive advantage going forward, especially when you have in a city where uh, predominantly their land is non-taxable. We've got to make sure we find our ways to take advantage of, of, of the perks and, and, and advantages that we have. Next slide. So when we talk about those quality of life metrics, again, we're going to naturally we're going to hit on unemployment, underemployment. We're going to focus on the certain individuals that we're serving, but we want to make sure we're affecting the median household income we, that we can go back and look at um, per capita income over the last 12 months. We want to uh, reduce the number of individuals in poverty and again hit some of those already underlying metrics. So the question is now, how do we do that? Well, first, we got to put together a talent ecosystem, and we've done that. Ms. Kroom has been working around the clock since she came here in October uh, to make sure that we have our partners uh, working with us. So externally, you can see the list there, and that's an extensive list, all the way from the Workforce Council, TCC, uh, Tidewater Staffing. When you start talking about uh, individual companies, you're talking about Dollar Bank, uh, communities, and, communities and schools, the Chamber, so on and so forth, our internal partners. We can't do this without working with the schools, working with the housing authority, and the city itself, police department, so forth. All of those folks coming together and teams coming together create what we call the Portsmouth at Work Coalition. And we're excited about where we are. Ms. Kroom has also set us up to where, when it comes to opportunities on the next slide, um, we are now a, a Grow with Google partner. Um, and Grow with Google is where small business owners can work with Google to make sure that their businesses are out there from a, a, a jobs need standpoint, to make sure that they're showcased on the internet properly, things of that nature. We think that's gonna create a pipeline as well. In the last week, since, what was that, Mark, Friday the 13th? When did we launch? About a week ago. So about a week ago, we we launched our our first iteration of course with that work with in the form of free virtual trainings. They are live right now. Those trainings include uh, several programs that are free and can be done from home. Uh, the work from home skills training. Uh, this is a training that allows us or allows an individual to earn a certification and a certificate uh, to show that they are prepared to work from home. Um, it's self paced. Uh, and it's it's something that once you're in this program, after you complete the program, you're a part of a, a job board or have access to job boards that have specific uh, uh, job requirements. Um, there are about 350,000 opportunities right now in working from home. And you can work from home, not just in your, you know, not just here in Portsmouth, but you can work for a company that's in Oregon, Phoenix, Arizona, call centers especially. Those are great ways to get things done. Um, that program has launched. We've launched our digital skills training program. When you get into the workforce nowadays, I think all of us know that you got to, you have to have basic computer skills in order to make things happen and to stay part of and stay relevant uh, in the job uh, community today. So you've got digital learning, which is for our beginner and intermediate computer skills. You've got North Star, which is digital skills, which are needed specifically for job searching. Uh, and then skills to succeed again another opportunity all free for individuals to learn self-paced and they take they go anywhere from a couple weeks to about eight weeks but it all depends on how fast and you are and how motivated you are to move through the process our last program which i'm very excited about and which is launching today uh is is what we call our smart start entrepreneurship program and if you don't know, this week is actually National Entrepreneurship Week. Um, it's typically recognized um, right around the middle of February. This is something that uh, former President Barack Obama brought into uh, brought back into fruition uh, when he became president. But it's it's an initiative that brings together a network of partners to educate, engage, and build equitable access to entrepreneurship and the entrepreneurship eco ecosystem. We always talk about entrepreneurship here in, in Portsmouth and we talk about it in the region, but what are we doing to foster entrepreneurship? Well, now you all have a program here in Portsmouth that when you go through this training and go through this, uh, and this is virtual as well, but when you finish this training or boot camp, you will end up being a loan ready type of company with a loan ready business plan. Uh, so you could go through this program and uh, learn everything on how to start a business for essentially under a thousand dollars. 
And this program will take you from A to B. You would then sit down with the SBA, obtain a, a uh, actual business plan and work through that business plan. And then from there, we set you up with the different resources to help you launch said business. And we think this is a smart way to do things. And that's why certainly we've called this Smart Start Entrepreneurship Program. Uh, we think it's gonna really foster a lot of development. Again, for under $1,000, you know how to um, start a business for under $1,000. And then we put you in front of the folks who can get you that thousand dollars. So when we talk about this, this portion of that work, um, this is just to start. Uh, we've got several things that are going on uh, here in the next several months. Certainly we will have a, a center that will be opening. The at work center will be opening soon. We'll have more details on that uh, as we progress through that process. Uh, but right now, these programs have in, launched in a week. They've been out about a week. We have 40 participants that have already signed up and are going through these programs as we speak. Um, so we're very excited about the uh, where we are. And that's just the folks that have spoken to us and signed up. We've had almost double that reach out to us about those programs. Uh, several individuals from Taiwan Staffing, several individuals from the Housing Authority, from the Hepwell's Workforce Council, they are all working with us to make sure we uh, create this pipeline of workers uh, for some of the projects we're going to talk about later on this, this morning. Um, if you go back one slide, if you have any questions, certainly I'm here for questions this morning, just wanted to give you an update. But Ms. Pamela Kroon is our point of contact in our office uh, with regards to the Workforce Development Program, but you can certainly reach out to myself or Mr. Donahue. And we even have an email set directly just for this program. It's at work at PortsmouthVA.gov. Uh, you can go there, receive information, and also begin to sign up as necessary for some of these programs. And I stand for any questions. Hey, Robert, it's Malcolm. Um, first of all, I, I, I really like what I'm hearing. I, I, I'd like to offer maybe just a, a couple of suggestions for consideration. Yes, sir. Um, one is if we could go back and um, um, make some measurable outcomes around the key metrics. I know you had a couple of them, but they're kind of broad. If we could go back and just maybe take another look at them mm -hmm. and then we could review those metrics uh, quarterly um, okay. just to see how we're progressing. And the other thing that I think you might want to think about is that it's missing a banking relationship. I think it would be great if we could partner with either a credit union or a local bank. They can understand what some of the folks have went through and it may help them as they try to get a loan from a, from a banking institution. Certainly. Well, and, and I'm, I'm glad you brought that up. So uh, if you recall, one of the partners in our ecosystem is Dollar Bank, certainly new to the area, quote unquote. Um, but they have stepped up and really uh, taken the, the lead on making sure that they are one of the financial institutions along with SunTrust or Truist, if you want to call them that now. Uh, so, yes, sir, we want to make sure, because that's one thing that I will tell you that a lot of entrepreneurs did not have when it came to some of these uh, federal uh, incentives and opportunities when it came to the COVID grants that were out there, whether it was PPP or some of these uh, idle loans. You've, you, you really have to have that banking relationship, right. know how to get through that process. Mm -hmm. So yes, sir, we agree. Uh, and we weren't able to list everyone there, but we agree that the banking is, is a big part of that. So when folks go through this Smart Start initiative, what they're gonna have is an opportunity when they have that, that uh, sit down with the SBA or, and, and formalize their, their business plan, we then take them from that loan ready business plan to additional resources including that banking information okay. uh, robert this is neil um i uh yeah i i also applaud you for you know such a uh, tremendous launch of this program and and i agree with malcolm that you know it would be great to get uh those measures or metrics that you put up on there are pretty much long-term metric, metrics. Uh, we probably need some shorter-term metrics, but in relation to that, um, do you have access to Jobs EQ, uh, particularly their jobs posting kind of uh, there? Because that I find that's a good metric in terms of uh, looking at you know what the employers are looking for in terms of employees and uh, for the locality and region. 
Yes, sir. I'm, I'm, I'm going to speak for Ms. Kroom uh, quickly. Ms. Kroom has access to a number of those job postings. Uh, and don't get me started on naming all of them because I, I couldn't. But uh, yes, sir, she has access to those 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 um, platforms. So we will make sure that when we're when we're you know, formalizing any program that we go for, we want to make sure that we're we're targeting and reaching those positions that are out there. So those trainings that we make sure we put forward, we're trying to make sure. Yep, when we look at those types of jobs uh, or job platforms, we're reaching the right folks and training the right folks to fill those positions. So yes, sir. I see chair, I see Mr. Uh, uh, the vice chair, uh, vice um, mayor, sorry, vice mayor Barnes. I just got a um, question. Do you guys have a Facebook page? We have, we do have a Facebook page um, and, uh, for Portsmouth Economic Development. And then we will have one. We are formalizing a, a uh, an additional uh, website for the uh, for the Portsmouth at Work initiative, uh, but we do have a, a, a Facebook page for Portsmouth Economic Development. Because uh, I, I, I suggest these these programs look very hopeful. So with that being said, I think that a lot there's a lot of people on social media that would be interested to know about these. Like now I'm live on Facebook and people are getting that information and they're asking about it. Yes, so it'll, it'll definitely be beneficial. And also in the Instagram and the Twitter as well, because I think people need to know about these programs and it definitely would be helpful to you guys and to the citizens of Portsmouth. Yes, sir. We appreciate it. We we are on social media, uh, primarily on LinkedIn, Twitter, and Facebook. We have launched this across all of those platforms. So if they go uh, follow Portsmouth Economic Development, and I, I ask this every month, I would ask that all of you follow Portsmouth Economic Development on all the social media platforms. Uh, we have also sent this out via Port City, which is the city's email program. So uh, we, we blasted this out over the last month, but we will make sure we, we maintain uh, that social media presence so everyone knows what is going on. Yes, sir. And one more suggestion, um, sponsoring ads will be beneficial too, because that, that gets to all of the citizens when you sponsor ads on Instagram and uh, Facebook. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Uh, we are we are looking at that now. What we did was we did a, a kind of a soft um, launch on social media to see how, how it came about and, and you know how it was going to play out in the, in, uh, in the program. Uh, but we do have money set aside to make sure that we sponsor those and make sure they show up in the forefront. So, yes, sir, you have hit the nail on the head. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Um, Robert, um, and, and I would follow up with that. Um, I do follow on Facebook and share it with my friends, and it would be great if City Council, the members, would um, follow, especially the new ones. But um, I do have a question. So until the actual center is up, and I know COVID is a big part of that, um, and I love it where they can come in and use the computers there. For those that don't have internet access or like their own computers at home, are any of the partners working with us um, or how are people able to do the training? So there, 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 there are several opportunities. Um, certainly, when you talk about the Hampton Wells Workforce Council, uh, but staff is working through our partners to make sure individuals have access. So whether it's the Housing Authority, uh, again, whether it's the Workforce Council, um, individuals can go to the library, so on and so forth. So yeah. we are trying to make sure that we're reaching those folks because we understand access and connectivity is, is it could be an issue. Um, um, certainly, we are excited. And what we will have as part of the work, the at work center, a a workforce development space and, and computer lab where individuals will be able to come in and sit down and complete this work as necessary. Um, but until then, yes, we're working with our partners to make sure we have the the outreach and the connectivity we need. That that's great. And I did have one more question. And I think I think you had touched on this at some point, but once we are able to be in person and live, um, is part of the training um, to people going to be, you know, just the basics on how to present yourself in an interview, you know, um, all of the basics that I, I found when we opened the Renaissance and we had the job fairs, it, it just, it, it was lacking. I mean, and that starts with the schools and I know that they're working on programs for that also, but we can only do so much over the internet. Yes, a, a lot of this, what you'll have is when we, especially when we start, when we launch the AtWork Center, 
a lot of this will have those soft skills and that soft yeah. skills training that you're speaking of. The, some of the cohorts that we're going to have going forward for the in-person, and I don't want to give give away too much just right now, but there are a couple programs that specifically start with the first half of the training is the soft skills and how to land that job, how to how to perform and, and actually you know, have that customer service aspect of the job and then the hands-on training. So uh, that is all something that we feel like that not just individuals looking for the for a job, but individuals currently working. Everyone, I think, can go through that soft skills training and, and, and learn to be better. So those opportunities will be there. Yes, ma'am. Perfect. Thank you. Any other questions, comments, or concerns? Robert, uh, this is a, a great, great opportunity that we have here, especially uh, considering the fact that, you know, we have uh, made arrangements for additional space on the floor where, where your office is. And it, it will require some sacrificing to get those kinds, that kind of training, as uh, Kathy mentioned and, and the vice mayor mentioned, uh, whereas, you know, they may have to, you know, find means to 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 come to the uh, to the site to uh, get that uh, necessary training. But meanwhile, uh, we will still, as you mentioned, uh, try to do everything we can for those that do have the capability for virtual training, and, and that's also a big part of it. But uh, this is going to be a, a major uh, plus for uh, our citizens and, and even for the region, because this is this is big uh, workforce development in other cities. Um, they're, they're, we're way behind the game. And, and this will at least put us in the playing field. And um, I, I commend uh, you and Ms. Kroon for what you've done in a, in a very short period of time. And, and everybody needs to understand too that this is in its infancy. So uh, be patient as you know we develop this uh, so that uh, it will we can reach out to as many people as possible. But uh, I commend you, you know, for what's been done. Thank you, sir. Uh, again, I, you'll hear me say it all the time. It's not me, it's the team. So the, the team has done their part to make sure that this is up and running. Uh, Ms. Kroom has done her a a tremendous job in making sure that this information is out and put together concisely and, and, and specifically. Uh, Ms. Jessica Biedenbaugh has put together the, the marketing. And so we will make sure we, we take what you have stated, especially with, with regards to social media and things of that nature and, and push that forward. Oh, the only thing I would ask of you all is to uh, make sure you tell a friend to tell a friend kind of situation and make sure that everyone knows what, what we have going on here in Portsmouth. Because again, we'll talk about some things later this morning, but when you, when you start talking about the casino project, when you start talking about other projects we have in the pipeline, and you're talking about thousands of jobs being created, we need to make sure we can fill those with Portsmouth residents. So uh, if you could just do that, do, do that favor for me, then this should be a very successful program and a very su successful initiative. And, and last, lastly, let me say uh, to uh, the vice mayor uh, and to Councilman Battle, I'm, I'm not sure if he's up here yet, but uh, I will be reaching out to you uh, on behalf of our authority and staff to, uh, you know, find time in your schedule so that we can uh, go over a lot of more details of not only this program, but some other programs that we're working on and that we'll, we've seen the need for in the city. So uh, just stay tuned. Um, I'll try to touch base with you all individually, um, Vice Mayor and Councilman Battle, so that we can, you know, you you have more time to to sit down and talk with us and go through uh, some some of the details. All right. If there's no other discussion, Chair will move through to the next item on the agenda. Yes. Thank you, sir. We're now in new business with the resignation of Mr. Kabachik that now leaves open the position of treasurer. So there we will need to appoint a, and vote on a new treasurer. And and let me let me uh, say to the other authority members, um, uh, it's un unfortunate that uh, you know Mr. Kabachik uh, can't be with us, but as you all know, uh, we, we we will need to move on and 
and I would like to uh, take the privilege of of making uh, these appointments and with your consent and your final vote, um, I, I would like to appoint uh, Ms. Kathy Drury as our new treasurer. And, and we'll take these one at a time. The next item is the budget and ad hoc committee. And just to kind of move things along, we'll, we will have to, I will, we will have to take a vote. But uh, also as the budget committee, um, I would like to appoint uh, Ms. Drury again as the treasurer, which is a normal custom for the treasurer to be on that committee and um, Neil Barber. So with that, um, we will, entertain uh robert you can take us through the vote process of entertaining motions and voting on the treasurer first and then the ad hoc and and if there are any ex upset exceptions or or if any questions then you can uh, bring that forth uh on the question and unreadiness part of the motion thank you sir um point of clarification uh, Mr. Miller, do we need to vote on the budget ad hoc committee or is that by consent? Good morning. The uh, budget ad hoc committee can be appointed by the chair without without a vote. Um, for the treasurer, uh, I think you should see if there are any other nominations and then you can proceed to a vote on that one. No seconds are required. Okay. So are there any other nominations for treasurer? All right, can I get a motion for appointment of Ms. Drury to treasurer? I move that we accept the recommendation of the chairman and Ms. Drury will serve as the treasurer. All right, and again, just to be clear, uh, Mr. Miller, we do not need a second. No, I'm good. For some reason I couldn't get the camera. So we, need, we can go to our, just a roll call vote. That's correct. You can just proceed to vote now. Thank you, sir. Uh, Mr. Barber. Aye. Ms. Drury. I think you're on mute. That's all right. Yes. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Mitchell. Yes. Mrs. Saunders Smith. Yes. Mrs. Barber Smith. Yes. Chairman Smith. Yes. Thank you. Motion carries. And Ms. Drury, congratulations. You are the treasurer of the Economic Development Authority. Thank you. Thank you all. So Thank then, you. as a point of order, Welcome. just wanted to, um, for the budget ad hoc committee, the chair has appointed uh, Mr. Neil Barber and the treasurer, Ms. Kathy Drury. Just want to have consent. So if, if, as I call your name, just, you know, if I can just get an eye or really all all in favor so that way i know um everybody's fine so all in favor uh, uh, yes i think i heard everybody um any opposed okay so the budget ad hoc committee will be again mr barber and miss drury and mr barber and miss drury staff will get with you to set up a time miss angela shepherd will set up a time so we can sit down and begin talking about the budget uh for uh, the next fiscal year Again, congratulations, Ms. Drury. Thank you. All right, Chair, we can go to the next item. Uh, the next item is state of the market retreat. We have uh, typically around this time, we would be planning or getting ready to have a retreat uh, for the EDA. As you can recall, COVID changed a lot of things, including the timing of said retreat. We did have a retreat uh, right around, I think, September of, of, of last year, which was very productive, um, a, a great opportunity for you all to let us know uh, the direction you wanted to go in as an economic development authority. What I will tell you is that uh, we, we think it's time to take that a step further. Uh, and we want to do this in conjunction, as jointly as possible, with the uh, Portsmouth Port and Industrial Commission, or PPIC. Staff is proposing to have a state of the market retreat where we would bring in uh, brokers, developers from the four different uh, uh, 
sections, if you will, of development. So commercial development, residential development, office development, and industrial development, and really talk to you about the state of the market in the region and more specifically <laughs> Portsmouth uh, to give everyone a baseline. Uh, mainly because, as we just stated, we are about to put together the, the budget. Uh, we will later this morning talk about some strategic initiatives with regards to uh, properties and things of that nature. So we think it's time to get everyone up to speed on where the market is. Uh, so again, you have that baseline. Uh, we will have other speakers, including individuals coming from the Port Authority to discuss items with you all. Uh, but I really think it's the time and an opportunity to, to discuss some of those items. I know you all have expressed an interest in having individuals come in and meet with the board and speak to the board. And instead of uh, taking that meeting time to do that, I think this is best served with all of the, or both boards and all of the commissioners having the opportunity to ask these questions. So we are proposing such a retreat for April the 30th, which is a Friday, if I'm not mistaken. And you would still have your April meeting. PPIC would still have their April meeting because there are, there's business that we'll have to discuss and, and conduct more specifically around the budget. Uh, but wanted to have that April the 30th, that morning, we don't have to necessarily start at eight, we can maybe start at nine, but prepare to be, you know, two, three, maybe four hours, uh, nine to 12, nine to one, an opportunity to really take a deep dive into the state of the market. So staff is proposing that. Uh, we're, we were hoping you will consent to that. It will be virtual. Uh, and then that way, you know, everyone remains safe and so forth. But again, you'd have your April meeting. You just have an additional meeting that following week, which would be that, that Friday. Any questions, comments, or concerns? I think it's a great idea. I'm, I'm excited about it. I think this is what we've all wanted, and I think it will really give us some of that information that we've been looking for. So thank you. Welcome. Any other comments, questions? I too think it's a great idea and I think it works hand in hand with um, some things that the business development committee has been looking at as to some suggestions of what we should do. So, you know, great, great idea. Good. Good. All right. So we'll, we will discuss this with PPIC as well next week, uh, but April the 30th appears to be the best date to, to have this. So uh, again, we'll, we'll work out the details and get those to you, uh, but we appreciate the opportunity to have this retreat and, and get this information in front. All right. Chair, if you don't mind, we'll move forward with the next item on the agenda. The last item of new business, which is a, a casino update. I don't know if we have another slide after this. I think we do. No. So just a quick update uh, of where we are. You should have heard, if you haven't already, because we had some great press surrounding the announcement of the uh, general contractors associated with the casino project. Uh, first, the national uh, contractor is Yates Construction out of, I believe, Mississippi. And then locally, SB Ballard Construction, great company, uh, great opportunity. They've done several projects throughout the Hampton Roads region. Uh, they are the local GC, if you will, for the project. Very excited about this. This was announced last week, but also announced last week was the opportunity to attend a, a workshop and, and virtual forum to learn how to be a part of this uh, project as a from a contracting standpoint, a subcontracting standpoint, more specifically geared towards that uh those small women-owned minority-owned businesses and, and you know to meet that requirement as per the legislation uh, for minority participation that event is actually set for this afternoon uh february the 16th from 2 to 4 p.m um i can tell you that has been out and announced um over the last 10 days and we have over 1200 individuals signed up already to attend that event again virtually uh so we I think this will be a stellar event and a stellar opportunity for local businesses to again learn how to be a part of this 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 program more specifically on the contracting side uh, to make sure that 
these individuals understand and know what they need to have in place to be a part of this project, to end up in the, the portal, if you will, to potentially be selected um, as some of these subcontractors on this project. Um, very excited again about this project and then moving forward. I will tell you that uh, also um, a few weeks ago, the lottery board did approve their uh, the emergency casino regulations, which allows and will set up essentially the opportunity for uh, our partner, Rush Street Gaming, to move forward with obtaining the license. Uh, so we anticipate that those re emergency regulations will be in place uh, by April 7th, which then soon after, Rush Street could submit their license uh, application. And that will put us on a great timeline to move forward and have this thing open uh, quickly. Information regarding that um, uh, project. And I apologize for the, the noise in the background. I don't know where that's coming from. But um, again, we're off, we're off and running. And this project, again, we've seen some great press uh, from this information. But we congratulate Yates and SB Ballard on being chosen and selected for this project. Any questions? I, I'm sorry. I, I have a question. I thought this workshop was from 10 to 12 today. Uh, did I get the time wrong? I might have got don't, again. You did. I did. Yeah, it's 10 okay. to 12. I apologize. It's 10 to 12. I apologize. It's okay. Um, uh, I didn't want to scare anybody. Um, yeah, 10 to 12. I apologize. Um, that's what happens when I don't have another slide in front of me, but um, 10 to 12. So that means you have to hurry up and get off of this meeting so you can <laughs> um, So thank you. But uh, 10 to 12 today, um, again, over 1,200 participants, and I'm hoping we have at least six more uh, with you all attending this this, this meeting. So, uh, but any other any other questions or corrections uh, uh, from the group? Let let me let me say, Robert, uh, Ms. Ms. Drury and Ms. Sana Smith have already put in their request uh, to depart if uh, we don't make that uh, deadline. So uh, they will drop yeah. off uh, at some point in time. But uh, once again, too, uh, let me say this for the benefit of the public in reference to the community. Um, Delcino Miles, the consultant uh, for the casino and her staff, they they will make an, be making a presentation on March 1st um, to the community uh, via Zoom at seven o'clock on March 1st. So uh, just for the benefit of, of the public that's listening, um, stay tuned for that. You will be uh, getting information on that uh, via Facebook, uh, the Cavalier Manor Civic League website and Cavalier Manor Tour site. So um, stay tuned for that. Um, they have uh, made it a goal to uh, reach out uh, to the community uh, in the most effective way. The community is not able to get together, as you know, because of the coronavirus. Um, even even though the parks and rec are plan on opening up some of the centers, the, the restrictions are still to 10 persons. So it's going to be virtually impossible to get uh, large groups of the community together. So we'll still have to uh, do it via Zoom. But that's just, uh, you know, for the public's information that may be listening. Um, are there any other questions or comments in reference, um, you know, to the casino and the update? If not, we'll move on. I think I saw uh, the vice mayor had his hand up. Um, before Vice Mayor, before you speak, I just wanted to welcome Councilman Battle uh, to the meeting. I uh, see that he has joined. Um, but Vice Mayor, if you had a question, that must have been by by mistake. But um, yeah, I, I was able to to talk with the casino people on last week, so I got some good information from them. Um, so I'm looking forward to their presentation at 10 o'clock as well. Good. Good. And yes, I have to I also have to thank Ms. Delcino Miles. She's done a great job. She has been the person really pushing this and making sure this would be a successful event. And to have over 1,200 individuals sign up uh, within a nine, 10 day time span, that's that's a great accomplishment uh, on her part. So um, we're going to rush to get you guys out of here by 10 o'clock as, as quickly as possible. Um, we'll see what we can do. I just have w one question with that in mind, since people may be leaving, I just wanted to go ahead and at least make this announcement. Um, 
Uh, first of all, I want to thank all the commissioners for providing suggestions and topics to our uh, monthly uh, board meeting. I want everybody to know that we are committed to addressing these suggestions. However, some topics may be appropriate for um, closed sessions. Um, we are committed to extending an invite to various speakers, and actually Robert has already spoke a little bit about that with the retreat. Um, but bear in mind, some cases, the discussions may be limited to um, two members at a time, depending on, on what, it, what it is. Uh, we also committed to scheduling tours of the properties for all commissioners. Uh, we may have to do it in two groups. Um, in addition to that, we are committed to a breakdown of properties and cost, which will be reviewed uh, quarterly. Um, Chairman Smith, as he's already mentioned, will schedule meetings with city council members and will review the outcome of the discussions with each commissioner in groups of two or individually. Um, future topics will be a, a deeper dive into our strategic plan to review how we can spur additional economic development in the city. And this may include a consultant to conduct a study to assist us in our roadmap. So again, I thank everybody who provided some suggestions. We are working through that list um, and hopefully over the next few months, we will address all of your concerns. Thank, thank you, uh, Malcolm. Yes. Thank you, Vice Chair. Uh, and then finally, just wanted to welcome, I believe, our interim city manager, Pace. Mr. Pace is on the line as well. Uh, thank him for being here uh, as well. We do have a need, Chair, to go into a closed meeting. And I believe Mr. Mitchell, Vice Chair Mitchell, has the uh, statement. Yes. Um, I move to go into a closed electronic meeting pursuant to Virginia Code subsection 2.2-3708.283 and City Council Ordinance 2020-102 and 1 Virginia Code subsection 2.2-3708A.3 for the purpose of discussing the acquisition and or disposition of real property where discussion in an open meeting would adversely affect the bargaining position or negotiating strategy of a public body, specifically regarding 3125 Victory Boulevard, 700 Crawford Street, Zero Harbor Center Court, previously known as the North Pier, the proposed casino property at the intersection of Victory Boulevard and Cavalier Boulevard, and development strategy for the EDA property inventory, and two, Virginia Code subsection 2.2-3708A.5 for the purpose of discussing a prospective business or industry where no previous announcement has been made of the business or industry's interest in locating its facilities in Portsmouth, specifically regarding Project Colt. Thank you, Vice Chair. Can we have a second? Second. Thank you, Mr. Barber. Any discussion of the motion? All right, Mr. Barber. Aye. Ms. Drury? Yes. Mr. Mitchell? Yes. Mr. Sondra Smith? Yes. Mrs. Barbara Smith? Yes. And Chairman Smith? Yes. All right, thank you. We are in closed session. So if you could leave out of this and then all of those scheduled to be in closed session, now open your closed session link and I'll see you all in, in a minute. Vice Mayor is on as well as uh, Councilman Battle. So we have a we have a quorum. Um, Mr. Mitchell, could you read us in the open? Yes, I hereby move that each commissioner certify that to the best of his or her knowledge, only public business matters lawfully exempted from open meetings requirements under the Virginia Freedom of Information Act and only such public business matters as were identified in the motion by which the closed meeting was convened, were heard, discussed, or considered in the closed meeting just concluded. 
Thank you, and I need a second. Thank you. Mr. Barber, any discussion of the motion? Okay, Mr. Barber. Aye. Ms. Drury. Aye. Mr. Mitchell. Yes. Mr. Saunders Smith. Yes. Mrs. Smith. Yes. And Chairman Smith. Yes. Okay, we are in open session. Um, in the interest of time, if it's okay, I'd like to go ahead and get the vote for the North Pier. I know it says items submitted by board members, but we can do the vote just in case uh, Ms. Saunders Smith needs to leave to go to the other meeting. Yeah, that's fine. Okay. So if I can get a motion to approve the, uh, how should we word this, Mr. Miller? Is he on? Mm -hmm. it, it, wasn't there a resolution in the packet? Yes, sir. Yes, there, was. there is. So you can just simply move to adopt the resolution. So move. Okay. Second. Who was that second? I'm sorry. Is Drury. Okay. All right. Any discussion of the motion? All right, Mr. Barber. All right. Ms. Drury. Yes. Mr. Mitchell. Yes. Saunders Smith. Yes. Mrs. Smith. Yes. Chairman Smith. Yes. Okay, motion carries. Um, last item on the agenda. Um, items submitted by board members. And let let me let me jump in here. Um, as um, Malcolm mentioned a little earlier, you know, um, some of the things that has been suggested and and as if you can recall, I've kind of appointed him to be that funnel for those things uh, on the authority. So uh, he's he's addressed uh, some of those um, previously in the meeting. The other items uh, we will have when we have more time to discuss it a report from our business and development committee that those persons are Kathy Jewelry and Teresa Sana Smith. They they have a few items that they want us to discuss, but um, we wanted to make sure that they are present for the discussion. And so at a at the next meeting, uh, doing this part of the agenda, they can they can discuss their their report of their recommendations that they would like us to entertain. So uh, just to make them aware that we we will put that off until next meeting. So if y'all are free to go, if you need to. Just uh, chair, I would I would tell the Miss Drury and Miss Sandra Smith, uh, Miss Croom um, will have a copy of the presentation from today, uh, the virtual presentation. So if you all would like to stay and discuss that this morning, you can um, because she will be providing that that presentation to you all as well. I just received that information. So you can certainly go if you'd like, however, I'm just giving you the option. Well, what what they're they what they, what they want to discuss is, is a different matter. Okay. Okay. Are there any other items to discuss then submitted by again once again, uh Rob, let me uh say to the other authority members that this is on the agenda for any items that you want to submit it doesn't necessarily mean that we're going to have a full discussion or that we're going to entertain you know uh everything that you're requesting but it is to get considerations for future meetings and agendas even if we have to pick a particular special time or even uh, consider a special meeting. So uh, keep in mind, and I think you've heard me say this before, there's a lot of things that we've got to deal with and there's sacrifices that we may need to make, even calling special meetings or other meetings other than our regular meeting. Our normal meetings are primarily for our business to conduct that. So. So it's up to the group. It's entirely up to the group. And I, I continue to thank you for, you know, your effort and your patience as we work through a lot of things that's coming before us. And take my word, and I don't have to tell some of you that we haven't seen anything yet. Uh, there's a lot more to come and some 
more planning and some more things that we need to put in writing and set in place so that everyone will know, you know, where we're headed and what we want to do and what we see the needs are. So uh, we've gotten a very good start. And, and again, I, I thank you. So, um, and again, this is the time just to, to make a comment if you want to make a comment or to um, say, let's talk about something in the future or, or I'd like to see this in the future or can we do that in the future? That's, that's what this is for. And so hearing, hearing nothing, uh, <laughs> I think everybody, everybody understands. Go, go ahead, Neil. <laughs> no, uh, I didn't have a real something. I just had a question to the staff. We didn't have any, uh, you know, uh, improvement grants on the agenda. This uh, is there any status as to what's in the pipeline uh, that may come before us in the next couple months? Uh, so the pipeline at this point, right now, based off the applications we have, which we're not ready to go before you as of yet for approval. But based off what we have, you would ex uh, would have extended all of the monies associated with the program. Uh, we're still in that same situation. Um, should that change, we will make sure we make that announcement so individuals, um, because we do have a pipeline of applications that um, we've had to turn down applications because, again, of that status. We have to let folks know um, while you may be number eight or nine in line, that's if we have some more money though. So as of right now, that status has not changed. Um, we anticipate having an, uh, some items coming before you in March um, as part of that meeting um, that will more than likely uh, extend the rest of the money that you have ultimately in the, in the pipeline. Um, just to follow up on what Neil stated, we are still do a conversation on the guidelines for the program and if we're going to make any changes or modifications. Correct. Um, we are having that. We will have that discussion or begin that discussion when we start talking about the the budget uh, and certainly the recommendation of first whether you should move forward with that project immediately, um, and then we will certainly schedule a meeting to have a discussion uh, more than likely in closed session. Uh, we'll see, but I'll have a discussion about um, the parameters that you all want to put forward with regards to the project or the program. Any other items? Any other comments? I, I think we're good for the day, Robert. Uh, it's been very uh, beneficial, very informative, and very uh, enlightening. And uh, we look for more and more opportunities of this type. And I, I again thank everyone for your patience and your consideration and and your understanding. Um, because we, again, we've got a lot coming before us, and we just just hang in there and be patient, and, and we'll work through everything together. Um, I, it means a lot, you know, when everyone um, is listening and working together, and everyone, uh, you know, wants to see uh, us make a, an impression not only uh, on our city, but you know, the communities that we uh, also represent. Okay. All right. Um, just a reminder, your next meeting is Tuesday, March 16th, 8 a.m. May I? Yes, sir. I'd like to leave us with this uh, small statement. It's better to be than to seem. Have a wonderful day. Thanks, sir. Thank you, sir. And stay tuned, uh, Councilman Battle and and Vice Mayor. I'm, I'm going to be touching, reaching out to you. Chair, real quick, just a reminder to you, we need you to come in and uh, sign some documents as quickly as you can, please. OK. I can do that. Thanks, sir. Thanks, everyone, and y'all have a great day. All right, thank you.